Good evening. Welcome to the Apostolic Oil. My name is Apostle Alicia, and I am ecstatic that you have joined us on tonight. Listen, I don't know how this is going to go tonight, but you know me. I'm always going to flow with God, but it's a beautiful day here in California, and I'm just excited about being here at the Cross TV Network where we are changing lives one day at a time, one minute at a time, one person at a time through the love of God and the Word of God. Listen. This is your first time tuning in. Welcome. I hope that you will enjoy this broadcast. We're taping live here in the studio. It's so beautiful in here. And the presence of God is definitely here. And I am praying that you can feel the presence of God where you are all over the world. Listen, tonight, I want to mention some special people in my life. Um, there is a thing that's going on across the country called bullying. And some of our young people are being plagued by this gruesome activity. We're living in a time now where p children are very much more cruel than they were when I was coming up. Uh, we had something kind of like that when I was growing up, but not as intense as it is now. And so there are some people, I started a campaign called Dare to Care. And so if your child is, billing, is being bullied and you would like for us to put them on our prayer list, please send me an email at dare to care at um, ignitedblue.com. That's D A R E, the number two, C A R E, at ignitedblue.com. And we will definitely put your child on the prayer list. There are some special people that I want to shout out tonight that mean a lot to me. And I want them to know that they have a friend. The first person I want to mention is Josiah Isaiah Emmanuel Free. That is my buddy. And it bothers me that somebody would take the time in class when they should be learning to bully him. So Josiah, I want you to know that Apostle Alicia is your friend. I'm proud of you for still going to school every day in spite of what you're facing. Know that Apostle Alicia is in your corner. So if, any, so if anybody wants to know, Josiah Free is my friend, and you just might want to be careful how you handle that brother, all right? The next person I want to mention is Nalia Palmer very dear to my heart, a beautiful young girl that loves to dance, she loves God, she goes to church, but she's been bullied and sometimes she feels like she doesn't fit in. Well, Nalia, Apostle Alicia loves you to life. I want you to know that you are beautiful, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and anybody that does not want to be your friend, that's their loss, sweetie. Love you to life. The next person I want to me mention is Haley Scrag. Haley, you are such a gorgeous girl. I've seen your pictures. I know your grandmother. You've been a blessing to her. She's always bragging about you every time you come over. You are a smart, beautiful young lady, and I want you to understand that bullying is not okay. But as you grow and evolve and be that wonderful person that you are, people are going to learn to appreciate what an amazing gift you can be to their life as a friend. Love you, sweetie. Last and certainly not least, Malika, Makaya Bumpus. Makaya Bumpus, beautiful girl, talented, very smart, but doesn't fit in. Guess what? You are going to be the one that's most likely to succeed. So just in case they don't know the beautiful jewel that you are, the amazing friend that you can be, they'll learn, but unfortunately it'll be too late. But just know that Apostle Lisa loves you, and I believe in you, and you can do great and mighty things. So all four of these beautiful people, these ha this handsome young man, these three beautiful girls, know that Apostle Lisa loves you, and bullying is not okay. We are to dare to care. I'm challenging every pastor that's watching me. Be more active in your schools, in your churches. The, the, the children that go to your church, go visit their schools. Let your presence be known because sometimes our presence makes a difference. So I'm challenging you to, you to do that. And those that are close to me, I'm definitely going to make my presence known in their school system. Because when I was coming up, the pastor would come to the school and just check on the students, see how they were doing. You'd be surprised what an impact that can have. So bullying is not okay. So if your child is being bullied, you want to put their name on the prayer list, please email me at daretocare at ignitedblue.com. God bless you. All right, so listen. Tonight we're going to get into the word, and I want to give a word of encouragement tonight. Because I believe that the body of Christ needs to be encouraged and the world needs to be prompted to come into the body of Christ. Now, last, last month when I was on here, we did, we did a salvation pool. And so tonight, I want to strengthen the believers. So I want to go to Psalm 27 tonight, and I want to read this from the Passion Translation. Uh, it says, the Lord is my revelation, light. 
to guide me along the way. He's the source of my salvation to defend me every day. I fear no one. I'll never turn back and run from you. Lord, surround and protect me. When evil ones come to destroy me, they will be the ones to turn back. My heart will not be afraid even if an army rises to attack. I know that you're there for me, so I will not be shaken. Here's one thing I crave from God, the one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house, finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I want to live my life so close to him that he takes pleasure in my every prayer. God help me. In his shelter, in the day of trouble, that's where you'll find me. For he hides me there in his holiness. He has smuggled me into his secret place where I'm kept safe and secure, out of reach of all my enemies. Triumphant now, I'll bring him in my offerings of praise, singing and shouting with ecstatic joy. Yes, listen, you can hear the fanfare, the shouts of praise to the Lord. God, hear my cry. Show me your grace. Show me your mercy and send me the help that I need. Lord, when you said, seek my face, my inner being responded. I'm seeking your face with all my heart. So don't hide yourself, Lord, when I come to find you. You're the God of my salvation. How can you reject your servant in anger? You've been my only hope. Lord, have mercy. So don't forsake me now when I need you. My father and mother abandoned me. I'm like an orphan, but you took me in and made me yours. Now teach me all all of your ways and tell me what to do. Make it clear for me to understand, for I am surrounded by waiting enemies. Don't let them defeat me, Lord. You can't let me fall into their clutches. They keep accusing me of things I've never done while they plot evil against me. Yet I totally trust you. Lord have mercy. I totally trust you. I totally trust. God have mercy. You got to totally trust the Lord. Lord have mercy. I totally trust you to rescue me one more time. Somebody say one more time. So that I can see once again how good you are while I'm still alive. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. Lord have mercy. This is a psalm of praise that David wrote during a time where he was being attacked, during a time where they were making all his accusations against him. But he had to make it clear that he, he is his Lord. And the believers have to understand that I know that you're going through stuff today. You've been battling. You've been ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to give up. What's the use? Everything is going down seemingly, but it's not the word of God. The word of God is going to stand forever. And I need you to understand, beloved, that this is the time that you have to persevere even the more. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to quit because I have to remind you who saved you. I know some people have gotten you out of bad spots. They might have bailed you out of jail. They might have helped you with your light bill. They may have given you grocery money. But at the end of the day, they did not save you. And you have to understand that every time we get ourselves into a situation, God is always there to bring us out. So David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Paul's right there. If you are in a dark place tonight as a believer, May I suggest to you that you have been disconnected from God. Now, I don't know how you got there, but I'm here to tell you that we serve a God of reconciliation. And the Bible tells us that we should have not only the word, but the ministry of reconciliation. And part of preaching and teaching is to reconcile people back to God. That was the entire purpose of Jesus Christ even coming into the earth 
us to reconcile man back to God. So you need to be reminded that the Lord is your light. And you have to remember that once you have accepted him, once you've given your life to him, that light now shines through you. So who told you you was in the dark? Who told you that things are bleak? Who told you that things are not going to work out? It's that serpent called the enemy, the adversary, the devil, the son of perdition that's whispering these lies to you. And this is why I have to remind that the Lord is your light and your salvation. So whom shall you fear? God, you don't even understand how powerful that is. Why should you fear somebody who cannot give you light, who cannot give you life, and who cannot save you? Because we are in a society where people fear the creature more than the creator. And as believers, we got to put our trust back in the creator because creatures are failing us. Creatures are lying to us. Creatures are deceiving us. Creatures are stealing from us. But our Lord and Savior will not do that. So why do we fear? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Hold it. How many people are running around talking about, I'm living my best life. But let me tell you something. You are not living a life at all if it's not in Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, that's where we get life from. He is a life giver. Contrary to popular opinion, it's not oxygen that's keeping us alive. Lord have mercy. There are people walking around today watching me right now on television with an oxygen tank sitting right beside them. There are people in the hospital right now that are on a breathing machine, but when they take them off that machine, they de cannot declare them dead until they draw their last breath. That last breath is called the Ruach of God. When God takes his breath out of you, that is when you are no longer existing. So he is the strength of our life. So why are we fearing people that cannot control the Ruach of God that's flowing through our body? Lord, help us today. Then he says, of whom shall I be afraid? We are afraid of people and what they say, but they don't have the power to destroy us. You can outlive a lie and a liar. You can outlive a scandal. You can outlive somebody's opinion. You can outlive this stuff. But you know the enemy will make it so huge while you're going through it, you think it's the end of you. But I'm here to testify on national television, it's the beginning of you. When you think that those words and those deeds and those lies and that discord has, is so huge that it's the end of your life, I'm here to tell you it is a launching pad to your destiny because the God that we serve, they lie on him every day but yet want him to feed them. Y'all not talking to me. They, they lied on him. They laughed at him, but yet they sent for him when their children were dead. They sent for them when they wanted somebody to be resurrected. They sent for him when somebody wanted to be healed. They sought him out. Isn't it amazing that when Jesus left Jerusalem, he never went back, but some of the people from Jerusalem was leaving that city and was following, y'all not talking to me, followed him everywhere he went, but wouldn't receive him when he was there. That's what you got to understand, beloved. They're talking about you right now. But when God begins to shift you and God begins to take you to that next place in him, they will be trying to figure out where you went. Where did they go? So why are you afraid? Okay. David goes on to say, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Let me tell you something about an enemy and a foe. They always like dead stuff. These are what I call buzzards. They swarm around you while you're dying. But the hell condiosa, they will swarm, Lord help me, they'll swarm around you while you're dying. But they're not bold enough 
to come to, to touch you until the life is gone out of you. Ain't that something? A buzzard will not even land and eat until they are cowards. They have to wait for something else to attack its prey. God help me. They have to wait for something else to attack its prey and leave it there. And once it dies, there's no life in it. Then they'll come down to eat it. Let me tell you something about your enemies and your foes. They're cowards. They will swarm around you thinking that you're dying. But honey, I do believe it was Ezekiel that said, Lord, when you passed by me, I saw me polluting our own blood, and I said, live. Let me tell you something. If you're bleeding tonight, and it like you're about to die, I command you to live. Because they're swarming, but they're not going to land until you die. But guess what? They won't get to eat up your flesh because God is getting ready. You remember, his strength of his life is in Jesus. Lord, help us. And that's why they're stumbling and falling, because they cannot touch what God wants alive. God, help me. Then he says, though, and host an army, a whole bunch of people should encamp against me. My heart shall not fail. It shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing have I desired, have mercy, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me tell you something. You may be going through the most tumultuous trial right now. But as long as you don't lose your desire to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you're going to be all right. See, let me tell you something. People think when they take their friendship from you or they stop sowing into your life or they don't support you anymore, that that's going to make you die. But when your desire is to dwell, not visit, but dwell in the house of the Lord forever, that is a game changer right there. And as long as that's what you're seeking, God will protect you. <laughs> Lord have mercy, he says, for in time, the day of, in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Let me tell you something. Every time you think you've hit rock bottom, remember the preceding word of that phrase, rock. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And if you hit him, you are hit a great place to be resurrected, to be catapulted to your next destiny. The rock is a, is a launching pad, a springing board. When you have the faith to believe in a chief cornerstone, rock bottom is nothing to God. Why? Because he is the rock. <laughs> so David said, listen. I'm going to go in the tabernacle, and I'm going to sing praises of joy. I'm going to sacrifice, because I don't feel like it in my flesh. I got all this stuff going on around me, but I'm going to sacrifice how I feel and let God know how, how much I love him. And, and, and I'm going to praise him based off of who he is and not what he's done. Believers, you got to get to the place where you begin to bless God for who he is and not what he does. Lord, have mercy. But even when he had a moment, he said, Lord, don't you hide your face from me now? I'm looking for you. I'm seeking for you. I'm looking for you. And sometimes the Lord is quiet when you're going through something. Sometimes it seems like he's afar off. It seems like the enemy's trying to bully you into suicide and bully you into giving up and bully you into thinking that God has forgotten. But honey, let me tell you something. The Lord will not leave you nor forsake you because you are his child. He does love you. Every promise he made, it's coming to pass. How can you say that, Apostle Lisa? I'm so glad you asked. Do you remember the children of Israel? <laughs> They, they were praying for years, hundreds of years for a deliverer. They had a word that a deliverer was coming. The deliverer came, led them out of Egypt. They began to complain and murmur against Moses, and they wandered for 40 years trying to get to the promised land. Now, isn't it amazing? This word came to pass. And the people that heard it at first didn't get to see the promised land. But it didn't mean the promised land wasn't there. Did you hear what I just said? They wandered 40 years in the wilderness and never got to see it. But the promised land was still there by the time Joshua and the rest of them got there. God meant what he said. Even if you don't receive it, even if you don't get to see it, don't mean it didn't say it, and don't mean it ain't coming to pass. That land was still there flowing with milk and honey. Everything was overgrown, overside, but it was still there. God still had it right there. Even though 
of the people that first heard the word didn't get a chance to see it. They died in the wilderness because they lost belief. But, the, but Joshua and the rest of them got to see it and inhabit it. Sarah and Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. They had now a child. He slept with Hagar, but Sarah still got pregnant. Even though she laughed, did not believe, set him up with Hagar, he had a baby by her, Sarah still conceived because God meant what he said. What are you saying, apostle? You can make a dumb decision. You can try to help God out. You cannot believe. You can even fail in your faith. But if God said it, it's coming to pass. So I need you to go back and think about some things that the Lord has promised you. I don't care if it's been 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. I don't care how long it's been. If the Lord said it, it's coming to pass. And I have to strengthen your faith because you are about to quit. And that's a wrong, that's a wrong move. Bad, bad decision. Don't do that. Because the very moment that you think God has forgot about you, there's something waiting for you that you're about to mess up true story about me I was going through stuff as a kid didn't think you know my life I had this stuff going on in my mind or whatever I was like ain't no need of me doing good in school I ain't getting rewarded ain't nothing happening for me ain't no need of me trying to be nice I'm just gonna do what I want to do I messed around mm -hmm. I snuck a boy in my room and didn't do nothing but just want to sneak because I was there by my, my classmate just sneaking me in my room so my mom and daddy was out of town on a, on a uh, anniversary trip now, unbeknownst to me, they were going to buy me a car at the, while they was gone away on vacation. But see, I didn't know that. I let the devil mess with my head, got in my feelings. I'm going to just do what I want to do. It don't matter. I'm, I, ain't nothing happening anyway. So I just stuck in this boy in my room, got caught. The boy got put out of my house or whatever by my grandma. She beat him with the broom, got him out of there. Laugh, ha-ha. But check this out. She was going to tell my parents. So and, and I was thinking, well, they don't no good. I'm in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble anyway. Ain't nothing really happening for me. But they, didn't, they did not spank me. They didn't ground me. They were so calm on the phone. I said, they ain't really calm on the phone. Well, how about they got home and they said, we were going to buy you. We was at the dealership that early that day to purchase you a brand new canary yellow Honda CRX. Brand new. But they left it there because I, I decided to get in, get in my flesh and do something stupid. Do you see? But you, that's what I'm telling you. You can be so close. You can be going through the, the, the more that you go through and the, the, the heavier it comes, I'm telling you, you're on the cusp of something great. I could have had a, everybody knows yellow is one of my favorite colors. I could have had a canary yellow Honda CRX brand new, but I messed it up. God has blessed me immeasurably since then. That's been many moons ago. <laughs> 40 some to 30 some years ago. But let me tell you something. I learned a valuable lesson. When I think that my good behavior is not paying off, when I think my good grace is not paying off, there's a blessing waiting. And every time the enemy tries to get you off course, it's because he knows there's something phenomenal on the other side of that situation. So I'm here to tell you, beloved, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. Do not fear what man can do to you. Do not be deceived what the enemy is saying. Don't worry about who's walked out of your life. None of that matters because he doesn't want you. He's not going to allow the enemy to you to be delivered into the hands of your enemies. So he says, listen to this. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen to me, beloved. Believe to see. I'm giving you a three-word prophecy tonight. Believe to see. Everything God promised you, everything he said, everything you've dreamt, every vision you've encountered, everything that you've heard in your spirit in your prayer time, Believe to see it. I dare you. Believe to see it. So see, uh, Micaiah and Jos Josiah and Joseph and um, Haley and uh, N N Nalia, we, you ain't the only ones being bullied. We as believers get bullied every day by the enemy, but we counteract that with the word of God. The Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. So just resist. Pray, 
seek God's face. And I'm here to tell you, believe to see. David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see. You're not going to faint if you just believe to see. So I challenge you to get that notebook out. Go look at your notes. Go look at those prophecies you've written down. Go back to those dreams you've written down and believe to see them. I know it's been a long time. I know you think you done messed up so bad. You done done all these crazy things. I know, I know, but guess what? It's not going to change God's mind about you nor his promises. The promises of God are yes and amen. I challenge you to believe to see. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these, your precious people all over the world, God, tonight. I pray tonight, God, that their faith has been reignited. I pray that their faith fail not because, God, you are faithful that promised. Yes, we go through things. Yes, the enemy comes at us from all types of directions. But you've given us a power that we can never diminish because it came from you. You've delegated this authority, this Holy Ghost power that the enemy cannot counteract. So we're going to believe to see so we won't faint. We're going to wait on you and be of good courage. God bless every household, every child that's being bullied. I pray a, a hedge of protection around them tonight, God, that the enemy will not take them out. They will not commit suicide. They are special. They are beautiful. They are handsome. They are intelligent, and they are necessary. And if they don't stay around, who do we have to look forward to tomorrow? God, I pray that you're covering us in your blood, and I thank you for all things. It is so, and it is well in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. You listen to the Apostolic Oil. My name is Apostle Alicia. I love you to life. See you next month. God bless.